Hello everyone, it's Mother's Day, it's also Sunday, so it's time for story time. So I have a very, very cool guest with me today. Um, this guest may scare some of you, but I'm using her because she is a mother and she has lots of lots of babies anytime that she ends up laying eggs. I have with me Elvira. She is a Brazilian black tarantula. Now, Brazilian black tarantulas get their name because they're nice and black like this, kind of a sheenish uh, kind of black there. You can see how it kind of shimmers in the light. She's very, very active right now. Um, I kind of woke her up, but I thought she would be special for this story time. She can lay up to 600 eggs per year. So that makes her a very, very busy mother. She's a very, very busy tarantula. With this type of tarantula, and just like with some other species, the females are going to live a very, very long time, sometimes over 20 years. Most males are only going to live maybe four or five years. So with her living upwards of 20 years and being able to have babies by the time she's maybe five years old, if you think maybe 15 to 20 years at 600 babies per year, that's a lot of tarantulas. But when tarantulas are born, they're very, very tiny. They're like the size of a BB. And because of that, they're also a food item for a lot of other animals, including other tarantulas. So they have to have a lot of babies in order to make sure that their species survives. Now, she's acting very busy right now because I took her out of her environment, you know, so it's making her a little bit on edge. She's starting to calm down a little bit and kind of getting a feel for what's going on here. So tarantulas have lots of different sensory um, methods all over their body. Um, for one, Brazilian blacks have a way of telling if something is a solid or liquid just by uh, feeling the environment around them. But they have these special hairs on their legs that you can kind of see in the video. It's a little difficult, but those hairs can pick up everything in the environment. They can pick up pheromones, which is chemicals that our bodies put off. So if I were really nervous about handling her and she was like scaring me, it would send out a different chemical and it would make her scared. I'm being calm with her, so she's starting to calm down as well. Those hairs can also pick up when the wind changes direction, uh, when there's heat uh, signature changes in the air, even barometric pressure. That's like the electric staticness in the air creating pressure systems. So like when a storm arrives, they can tell when the storm is going to be there because it's putting a pressure on her body. Now I don't really have to worry about her biting me because with her and many other tarantulas, especially what we'll consider new world tarantulas, things from North and South America, they want to hide first. They don't really want to bite. If they bite, that's using a lot of energy and the venom that would be injected also helps them digest food. So they don't want to waste it. She's not going to bite me if she can't eat anything off of me. She's going to save that venom for when she's going to try to eat something like a cricket or a cockroach or a worm, something that, like she's going to find tasty. If she can't run and hide, she'll kick some of these hairs off of her abdomen there. Those are called urticating hairs. And when those urticating hairs get on your skin, they cause an itchy reaction. Um, kind of like touching poison ivy. It gets really, really itchy fast. And so for her, the majority of her, her predators are going to be things like birds or small mammals. So when they come down towards her, she kicks those into their face. So it gets inside their eyes and their nose, so the eyes swell up and they can't see. The nose swells up, they have trouble breathing, and then she can just go ahead and run away. If she absolutely has to, she'll turn around, she'll show them her fangs, which you can't really see here, but you can see her chelicerae, which are the parts that house her fangs. Um, and then she'll tap at them to try to get them to go away from her. And then if she has to, she'll bite, but she typically won't. Uh, tarantulas and spiders are kind of two different things. Um, they're both arachnids, they both have eight legs, but tarantulas we can tell the difference on because of the way that they climb. Uh, she has these little hooks, really hard to see, but there's two little hooks in each arm. Those come out and allow her to grab onto things, but they have to have grip. Spiders on the other hand have little microscopic hairs on each leg, that's why you can see them climbing on things like glass. The other is the way the fangs are housed. So like I said, she has her chelicerae up there you can kind of see them on the front. They go up and down and they can move them back and forth and they can move them out and do all this with them. But on spiders, they're either back and forth or at an angle and they have to move together. So that's another way that there's a difference between spiders and tarantulas. She does have eyes. She has what we call compound eyes. And the compound eyes are right there. 
again, they're tiny. They're hard to see. I'm sorry. I shoot these videos myself on my phone. I'm not a, I'm not a videographer or anything like that. So, but she does have compound eyes there. They help show shadow movement. So again, with birds being one of her main predators, she can tell when something goes overhead. So that shadow that they cast will block out the sun and let her know that something's up above her. And then she can run to her burrow and hide. She's a pretty heavy body tarantula. She's not lightweight at all. Um, but that sometimes makes them scarier to people. And for other people, it makes them less scary. Some people that come into the store are very, very afraid of spiders, but they're not afraid of tarantulas because they can see the big heavy bodies and realize that they're there. Other people just don't like the size of them. There's all these myths that a tarantula is going to hunt you down and try to kill you or hurt you or that they hunt people and they don't. Not at all. In fact, there's no documentation that a tarantula bite has ever killed somebody. You can have allergic reactions to them. Anything that envenomates you, so bees, wasps, hornets, uh, they can sting you. And some of us have reactions to them, some of us don't. It's the same with tarantulas and spiders. Uh, anytime the venom goes in through uh, a mechanism, so whether it's a stinger on a bee or a scorpion, or whether it's the fangs of a tarantula, it's being ejected into you, so that's a venom. And we all have different reactions to them. There are anti-venoms for tarantulas, so you're just gonna have to wait it out. Uh, studies on their venom have shown that the equivalent of being bit by one of these guys is the same as being stung by a bee. So if you're someone like me who doesn't have reactions to it, it's gonna hurt for a couple minutes and then it's fine. If you're someone who's allergic to bee things though, you might have to use an EpiPen or go to the hospital and take medications. But as you can see, she's pretty calm. We don't really have to worry about it. So she's a very, very busy tarantula throughout their lives. Uh, again, like 600 babies per year. So she's a pretty busy mama, um, which makes her ideal to use for Mother's Day. And also to read our book today, uh, The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carl. So we're gonna go ahead and read this book to Miss, uh, Miss Elvira here, especially since she seems to have calmed down a little bit. Let me if I can get the book opened up. Okay. Early one morning, the wind blew a spider across the field. A thin silky thread trailed from her body. The spider landed on a fence post near a farmyard and began to spin a web with her silky thread. This book is very, very flimsy. There we go. I'll hold it as best I can. Nay, nay, said the horse. I want to go for a ride. The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Moo, moo, said the cow. Want to eat some grass? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ba, ba, bleated the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ma, ma, said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ah, I lost my lights. Oink, oink, grunted the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Woof, woof, barked the dog. Want to chase a cat? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Elvira's nocturnal, so I think she actually likes that the lights went out a little bit. Meow, meow, cried the cat. Want to take a nap? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Quack, quack, called the duck. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. Crow the rooster. Want to catch a pesty fly? 
And the spider caught the fly in her web. Just like that. Woo hoo! Asked the owl, who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very, very busy day. The end. All right. I got to stand up and turn the lights back on so we can finish looking at Elvira. There we go. So, spiders have a very, very busy day. She built that web in order just to catch food. She spent all day doing it. So sometimes we have to do things that take us a very, very long time just to have a very, very short payoff, but that's okay. So spiders and tarantulas will do that, spinning webs with these called spinnerets. Again, hard to see in the video because of how jet black she is, but you can kind of see them sticking off right there. So spiders are going to spin webs up in the air to catch their prey items, but a tarantula is going to lay a mat of webbing. So literally, they will take their webbing and make a flooring out of it across their burrow in order to catch whatever comes by. She's what we call a sit and wait predator. So she's going to go down in her burrow and then she's going to wait for something to go across that mat. It's going to shake it and send a signal down to her and she can come out and she can grab that food item and bring it right back down in her burrow again. Right, Miss Elvira? Isn't she beautiful? So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's story time. I know sometimes tarantulas scare us, but I hope you learned that they're very, very gentle. There's nothing to really be scared of. And also that tarantulas are very, very busy moms. So, have a good Mother's Day, and we will see you guys next time.